and welcome to The Franchise Life. I am your host, Stacey Shannon. Today, we have a very special guest, Carrie Tober, who is the f- Vice President of Franchise Development for the Milkshake Factory. Welcome, Carrie. What's up, Stacey? Good morning. I know. Well, thanks for the swag to begin <laughs> with. I love repping the brand. To show up and show out today. Yeah, no kidding. And you even brought some goodies with you that I'll get to dig into after the podcast. We'll do an official taste test right yes, after we're done that talking. That sounds fantastic. Awesome. So, okay, the Milkshake Factory this is probably one of the longest standing brands that i've ever introduced so the milkshake factory which is uh founded in pittsburgh philadelphia is a fourth generation ownership now established in 1914 that's correct yeah with 11 corporate locations and just started franchising this year absolutely so give us a little bit of history. I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of history there. there so what are the high there, bullet points? There is. I mean, these, these guys started, actually, the family immigrated from Greece back in 1914. And so you go back to that time, you know, 1912, the Titanic sunk, right? Fenway Park was built in 1912. And two years later, this family comes through Ellis Island. They actually follow the dairy trail up to Pittsburgh. Um, there was a whole bunch going on in Pittsburgh at the time. A lot, it was a big steel town, so a lot of millionaires there. And they went and they started selling chocolate right on the street corner. Um, they saved enough money so they were able to buy a retail front with an apartment above it. And they turned that into a chocolate shop. And then, you know, over the next couple of generations, just started growing the wholesale chocolate business. Um, in the 70s, uh, the, one of the, the as a, a mother who married in, Donna Edwards, who's now the mother of the, the three siblings who run the brand, Um, she opened her own chocolate shop and her three kids grew up inside of a chocolate factory. Like imagine you're going on school trips to the chocolate factory and this is actually where your family produces their income from. It's kind of like Willy Wonka. I mean, yeah, without the crazies. I mean, I'm sure there's crazies in every family, but it was, uh, you know, what I've heard is, I mean, I I didn't grow up in a chocolate factory. I grew up with with a father as an attorney and a mother as a CPA, total different bring up. But, um, so they, they grew up in this, in, in this environment and, um, you know, during a college project, uh, Dana Edwards, uh, she actually was, was tasked with what can I do to drive more revenue to this business? And so what she did is she flipped this chocolate shop on its head and she brought the ice cream up front and they started rebranding it as the milkshake factory. And it got a cult following and people just in Pittsburgh would go and they'd enjoy all of this, um, these tasty treats and, you know, business just kind of did its thing from call it 2003 up until 2016. Now, I'm going to pause for a second and just kind of shift gears because in 2003, Dana and her brothers were actually working at the White House. They were working in the advanced office for the um, uh, George W. Bush administration. So, you know, they're on Air Force One. They're traveling with the president. They're planning every step that that gentleman takes and really just had this awesome opportunity to be in and around D.C., uh, in 2008, when the administration ended, they actually went and started wholesaling their product again to places like Saks Fifth Avenue, Dean and DeLuca, Target, just like a high-end gift box, something like you see right here. Uh, and then the Pentagon sent out an RFP, right? They were looking for a chocolate shop inside of the Pentagon, right? So the Pentagon, if you don't know, is the largest low-rise office building, in, I think, the world with 30,000 people. And so they were awarded the the request for proposal and were able to put a chocolate shop in the Pentagon. So overnight became the most secure chocolate in the the entire world, right? (laughs) The most secure. Um, And so (laughs) what was funny, and you can can go right online and find all this information, is that the Washingtonian wrote an article about them, literally says former GOP staffer now slinging chocolate in the Pentagon, um, picked up the article and a Costco buyer stumbled upon it and called them in for, for a meeting. And so they sat down for a 30 minute meeting, turned into about three hours. Um, And then they, you know, they walked out of the meeting with the task of building the best product they could. They went back to Pittsburgh, did a whole bunch of R&D. They put together caramel chocolate and they went to the supermarket and bought all the pretzels off the shelf and tried each pretzel. And they came out with snappers, which you can find in your, your local Costco club. Um, Other products, it's under the Edward Mark brand, but it's, you know, things like, um, the chocolate covered coconut almonds, things you see every single day yeah. are, are in Costco. So, um, they did a great job with that. Now, in the meantime, in the background, the milkshake factory is still gaining notoriety. People are going in, um, 
the University of Pittsburgh is busing people over on, on college tours. And uh, PNC Bank was developing a lead certified building in downtown Pittsburgh. They, what they wanted was instead of like a T-Mobile or a laundromat on the first floor, they wanted an iconic brand. And so they approached the Milkshake Factory family and said, we'd really like to have you here. And so, you know, the Milkshake fam family did what they did. They said, no, no, thank you. And so they did that three times. Then PNC said, literally, we need you to come do this. We're, we're going to help you out. And they opened what we call our flagship location, the location you see right here behind us. Um, so this was the, the second location that was open and really the, the jump off point. Um, and then about six months into that, they realized, hey, we need a real operator for this business. And they went out and they sourced a high level, just lucky enough to be franchise executive, a, an oper a VP of operations, somebody who's done this you know, hundreds and hundreds of times previously. Uh, and then they realized that they had the ability to expand. And so um, from call it 19, uh, 2018 until until present, they've opened nine locations. Um, six of those locations were opened in a 16 month period. So what Incredible. I call accelerated market dominance and just right now, green fields, no franchisees, first to market in the milkshake industry. Like, let's go. <laughs> wow. I asked for a history lesson and I definitely got one. <laughs> when you said Titanic in 1912, I'm like, that really puts it into perspective. Kind of anchors it, right? Yeah, it Pun does. Intended, How long I guess, this right? has been around? Crazy. Yeah. Um, love the look and feel. So it, it kind of takes you back in time. Well, I'm a little bit older than you, but it has you know. that old ice cream shop feel with a modern flair. Yeah, to it's me. classic, timeless. It's like it's like a warm hug from an old friend. It oh, feels so like good when that. you walk in there. Because the cool part is right here we're we're standing at the door and if you're if you're standing at the counter looking out, um everybody's walking in with a big smile on their face and all you have to do is just for the you know 2 minutes that they're in the shop just keep that smile on their face. Yeah. And who I mean, a milkshake makes everybody feel good, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there are dairy-free options too, all right, for anybody who, who doesn't think it feels good. <laughs> Which, I, I, that was a question, so you beat me to it, because I am lactose intolerant, so I would be one of those that need a dairy-free option. So about 4% of our business is dairy-free, and it is some of the best dairy-free product I've ever had. Awesome. Okay, so we have complete green space. I mean, this is by all means a proven concept. Yeah. It, they've replicated this model 11 times over locally within the Philadelphia area. And so for an individual that is looking for an investment, yep. why Milkshake Factory? Well, uh, to your point, so this is something that they've, they've proven the multi-unit concept over and over. Um, Pittsburgh, sorry to correct you, but Pittsburgh, right, is the 68th largest city in our country. It's only got 300,000 people in it. So wow. if you're looking for an investment and you, you think at a pretty large scale, you can understand that Pittsburgh is, is not a Orlando. It's not a Dallas, Texas. It's not a New York City. So there's real upside potential. Um, and the cool part of it is if you look into our, our literature, into our franchise disclosure documents, We've really been able to provide a lot of clarity and transparency as to what the numbers look like with inside the business. Uh, my personal background, I was, uh, when I started in franchising, I was in the food and beverage space. I worked with a butcher shop concept and I was lucky to be surrounded by a whole bunch of executives in, you know, what I'd call the fast, casual and quick serve industry. And they taught me all about not just P and L's, but day parts and average ticket and, and daily mm -hmm. transactions. And so we were able to pull all that from um, the POS system over at Milkshake Factory and provide that in, in our what we call an item 19. So I get a lot of, and thank you for correcting me. I don't know why I keep saying the other word, it's but it's right. Pittsburgh. <laughs> My homeboy over here is wearing a Pittsburgh hat. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, okay. So I work with a lot of individuals that are interested in a lot of different segments sure. of the franchise industry. Food and beverage for me tends to be one of the tougher ones yeah. because in just a couple, you know, these, th this is just reality. Higher employee count, yep. higher turnover, and uh, more significant build out with hoods and fryers. And, you know, it's just way more extensive. Yeah, of course. So talk me through, um, you know, if, if you have a prospect that are, is concerned about those things, 
How would you talk them through it? Yeah, and great question because that was the exact concern that I had when I got the phone call from from our partners saying, hey, we got a new brand for you. Um, again, know all about the food space. And so when I heard about this and saw the, the website, I'm like, this is going to be expensive. Uh, but the latest iteration uh, that will be the franchisable product, we opened for about $550,000. And that's including everything to get you going and the franchise fee. So um, that kind of put it to bed. In certain municipalities, you will need a grease trap, but you don't need hoods. There's no hot cooking that's going on, right? So it's all refrigeration and, and managing the, the, uh, the ice cream making process, which is really cool. The ice, can I talk about the ice cream making process for you a second? You absolutely can. Because this is, this is one of the things that like blows my mind. And if anybody knows about, um, food manufacturing, if you've ever been to an ice cream plant, um, you'll, you'll go in there and you'll see that they're only making one actual flavor of ice cream, which is vanilla. And then what they do is they put in these things called inclusions, right? So it's like sugary syrups to make the flavor, or they'll put in like Oreos to make it, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rocky Road or cookies and cream, right? Mm -hmm. So they've actually taken that process and put it in store. So everything starts with a vanilla ice cream base, which is really exceptional and put together by, um, forget his title, but we'll just call him the dairy master of Penn <laughs> State or something like that, the director of dairy. Um, but some, some guy who in way upstream in the ice cream business, but they do all the production in house. And then what they do is when you order the milkshake, they're actually taking the metal tin and they're adding the syrup and the inclusions right there before they put it into the spindle. It's pretty cool. Very cool. So, you probably know more about ice cream now than you ever thought you would. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Coming from the meat industry, this is, this is a whole different side of the equation. <laughs> so employee count. Yeah. So we're looking 12 to 15, uh, and they stagger out in what I call four different stages. So you have your hourly employees, that's your entrance level. Um, when they make it about 90 to 120 days, you're usually bringing them up to what we'd call like a supervisor level. And then from there, we have assistant managers. Most stores are run with assistant managers, and then you have a general manager overseeing multiple locations. All right. And, you know, I could see at the end of the day, this would be a place where individuals would want to work. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like you're uh, at a McDonald's flipping burgers or something. I mean, you're you're happy. Yeah, to you're be not here. pushing buttons on right. microwaves. You're walking in and people are greeting you. They're excited because yep. it's, uh, they're buying chocolate and, and ice cream. Absolutely. Okay. So we've talked about employee count. We've talked about the total investment. Um, what do the returns on this look like from an item 19 standpoint? <clears throat> yeah. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, average unit volume right now for, for an emerging brand is, is in the 800s. Uh, and then the returns are showing, you know, mid to mid to high 20s. And what's really cool that we were able to capture is we were able to get Q1 of 2023 and show year over year growth. And I'm really excited to say, I know I can't go into the numbers, but I'm really excited to say that what I know is those, that trend has continued to go up. Um, unfortunately, you know, up in the Northeast, it's COVID was still a thing for about 15 months. Mm -hmm. And I, I hate to have to talk about it, but even our 2022 numbers show increasing as we go throughout the year. And this year has just been even higher than what we've expected. So we're just we're super excited as to what's going on here. Well, that's fantastic. So, I mean, having visibility into a lot of different brands and the financials that they show in their item 19 in the franchise disclosure documents, um, what I've seen of the milkshake factory is complete P&Ls, yeah. which is not the usual case. I mean... I don't want to say unprecedented, but it's, it, 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 you can, it, I think it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty, you know, not, not, not normal, pretty abnormal. So which should give any prospect looking at this a good feel as to, you know, the health of the brand. Right. And listen, when you put these things together, you want to make sure you have a great founders, right? The great leadership team, and they have really put together a phenomenal leadership team and then transparency on those numbers. Mm -hmm. And and we've been able to put both those together, which is, which is awesome to see. So Carrie, when you're looking for individuals yep. and considering partners in the milkshake factory, what does the ideal candidate look like? Yeah, well, we're definitely looking for somebody who's a part of their community. Uh, someone who can be a good leader. Um, I, I'll give you a little background story. So when I was younger, I was a DJ and a pizza guy. Jeez. And sorry, but 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 it's it's relevant I here because that, Carrie, because though. if you're a DJ or a pizza guy, you can get in anywhere. 
you just show up and they're like, oh, come on in. You're the DJ. Yeah, you gate goes up, right? Um, same type of feeling, but with chocolate, right? So like, if you're going to be in your community, you want to be the one who's like paying for your parking with chocolate, right? You want to be known as the chocolate person in your community or the milkshake person. Um, it's an iconic brand too. Like we have these shirts, right? Yeah. So like, if you walk around, if you go to the airport with that, somebody's going to stop you and say, where, where, where is that? And where can I find it? Yeah. Right. So those are you know people who are outwardly focused and understand that they can build something bigger than just a business. That's, that's what we're looking for. And does this individual need to have any experience in food and beverage? I mean, it, it, no, but it helps, of course, you know, and, and I think the awesome part of this too, is that our team has put together, um, not only with the Repham group and Franworth in the background, we've put together enough resources that somebody who has no food service experience can come into this and understand what a simple operation it is. It's really not a lot of moving parts. So what does the footprint, I mean, from this visual, it looks like a pretty large footprint. Yep. So this this is the original, or the flagship location. That's about 2,000 square feet. Um, what we're looking at right now is in the, uh, call it the 1,300 to 1,600 square foot range. Okay. So, the, so that's reasonable. That's very, not, very much so, yeah. Yeah, so you have just small sitting areas for those that want to stay and enjoy, but I could imagine most of it. Yeah, they've actually, they've scaled, they've scaled it back. They've, they've put up like a, what I'd call like a leaning wall where you can just kind of a counter that you can set your stuff on and everything's done in plastic cups. So, I mean, the average milkshake is probably consumed in 10 minutes anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what is the, um, I guess the average price of the product? Yeah. So we have three different price tiers. Uh, you can get into your first milkshake at around $6 and 75 cents. It goes up for, I think, seven ninety five for the, the middle of the road. And then the limited time offers that they rotate through every sing, every six to eight weeks. Those are coming in at nine ninety five, And that's in the Pittsburgh market. So if we go into a market that commands higher dollars like New York City or, mm -hmm. or Northern Virginia, those prices will, will obviously have to be adjusted. Okay. So let's talk about distribution yeah. briefly, because that, uh, as I understand, this is a proprietary yep. product mix. So, and, you know, right now it's localized in a specific area. Yep. So what does that look like for distribution for individuals that say may open up in Texas or here in Florida? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're hitting all the big questions here, Stacy, right? <laughs> how much does it cost? How much can you make? Yeah. How do I staff it? And how do I distribute it? So um, these guys have done a great job. They partnered with uh, Galloway, which is a dairy distributor, uh, and they're using uh, Cisco distribution as a vehicle. So they've partnered with Cisco Emerging Brands, which has 76 DC points throughout the United States. So we're able to get product anywhere in the country right now. Fantastic. All right. Well, what am I missing about the milkshake factory? A milkshake. Oh, you're, duh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you couldn't show up with one of those? No. <laughs> product quality deteriorated well, on the flight. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get it here in West Palm Beach soon, okay? Absolutely. I would love that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for being with me today and actually making the trip down here to oh, my South pleasure. Florida. I relish, I relish at the opportunity to get in studio with you. <laughs> get you out of New York there for a little bit. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For anybody that is interested in learning more about the Milkshake Factory, please feel free to reach out to me to, at Stacy at FusionFranchising.com. Thanks and have a great day. And now it's time for a taste testing. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> so Carrie and I are here and we have just uh, taped our podcast. And now it's time for the official taste testing of the product. All right, <laughs> Carrie, you ready to dive in? Yeah. What do you want to start with? You want to start um, with the salted caramels, the s'mores crunch or the pretzel bite? Um, let's start with the salted caramels. See what we have here. Ooh, look at that packaging. A couple different types of chocolate. All right, I it. like dark chocolate. Yeah, me too. Let's try those. Okay. Eat the whole thing? I just want it all in. All right. <laughs> That's really, I, I was going to have caramel coming yeah, I'm out. Yeah, so. it's really good. That's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Very good. Oh, wow. Well, this is breakfast for me. Well, they nailed that caramel. Uh huh. Mm. Or chewy. <laughs> so that's our grandfather's recipe. Caramel. Wow, that is so good. 
Wow. Are you okay? Yeah, and we it just, sticks to your teeth. We're a just going to keep saying wow. <laughs> yeah. There's going to okay, be let's great content. Switch over here a little bit. Yeah, let's blast our palate um, with these s'mores. Now bites. we have the s'mores crunch. Mm, who doesn't love a good s'more? If I'm Look not mistaken, this. this is actually life cereal. Or what? Uh, life? No. What kind of cereal mm, is that? That is so good. Um, Chex Mex? No. No. I'm not sure, but it really is a cereal base. Well, that they, that is, I'm going to go for a second on yeah. that one. That one is good. Is golden grams? I feel bad. Oh, that could be it. And chocolate covered marshmallows? Mm-hmm. I should probably know this. You guys want some? Oh, they'll do again when we're done. I know. <laughs> but it's always funny to mess with the camera guy. Chocolate covered marshmallows? Uh-huh. Okay, mm. hey, we need a cheers on this next one. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need to use better descriptive words like melty and creamy and chocolatey and okay, okay, rich and decadent. The crossroads between sweet and salty. Cheers. Fine. Mm. Definitely crunchy. Mm. These are substantial um, pretzels. They um, they definitely withstood the travel from Pittsburgh to Florida very well. So we have a mix of dark chocolate and milk chocolate. We do. On these. The sweet and salty. I love it. All right. All right, let's vote. Which one did you like the best? I know where I went. Right here. You did? Yeah. You know, I love those, but I honestly have to say I love the mix and the s'mores. All right, cool. That's for you. That's for me. That's for them. That's for them. All right. (laughs) <laughs> and that ends the official taste testing of the chocolates from the Milkshake Factory.